This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night from wherever time zone you are attending this webinar. We in Chart World are very happy to welcome you to this session addressing the latest version of MIRA 1.8, which stands for My Root Appraisal. My name is Frank Berger, and together with my colleague Florian Friesike, I'm very thankful that you took your time to participate in the today's webinar. Um, first of all, prior coming to the agenda, may I kindly ask you for attention for some housekeepings. Could you kindly switch off your cameras? Um, we didn't find the option to do this via the webinar tool. So could you do it your own, please, in order to reduce the workload for the internet? That would be fantastic. Only Florian and myself will remain having switched on the cameras. Thanks for that. Mics will be muted from our side. That should work. Um, in the webinar tool on the upper right hand side, you find a small icon there, which is for the chat function. Any questions, any queries you may have, please leave it there. Please make sure you send it using the option send to organizer. I will take it then up and at the end of the session, we will address then your queries and questions accordingly. Oh, we are coming to the agenda. Then we have number one, the welcome message, which I'm already in, so to say. Um, and I will um, find some words about the general philosophy, why we have developed Myra, and what is the main idea of Myra. Um, as next, we will then have Florian Friesike going through the process of Myra 1.8. Um, he will go through the entire process to request for voyage plan proposal. Saying that, we are very, very thankful for all your inputs, for your thoughts, for your um, wishes and requests, suggestions for improvement to which we have the chance to implement in our solutions and that we have the solutions now on that stage where we are presently are. Very thankful for that. Last but not least, we will have then the question and answering session. Right. In terms of the welcome message again, um, I'm very pleased having you here attending us today for this webinar. And I see a lot of known names and faces in the and attendee list from customers and friends which we are serving already and working with already since years. But I'm also happy to see some new names. And many thanks for your interest. Um, in terms to bring everybody on the same page, uh, what is the philosophy behind Myra and what is the idea behind Myra, let me find some general words about that. Basically, um, in Myra, we are addressing two main topics. And this is number one. In Myra, we offer an additional safety layer. And number two, we are reducing the administrative uh, way, workload of the navigator. Coming to number one, the additional safety layer. Um, by preparing the voyage plan proposal in our service here in Hamburg, we are pre-checking each individual voyage leg by using active software and using ENC data. This enables us to particularly highlight against the navigator any potential danger we have found in the, during this route check, which is done uh, as per the IHO standard, since we are, as I said, able to do this with active software and ENC data and asking them the navigator to particularly check and do risk assessment for the particular voyage lag where we found a potential danger. Number two is the administrative workload re reduction for the navigator. Um, we, we all know, I mean, we, we are Intertanko members since years. We are in the navigation subcommittee since 2015. We are close, very close to look after the OCAMF requirements and looking after that our products 
are fully supporting the customer's needs and endeavors to be fully compliant with OCAMF requirements. Saying this, we're looking after to create products which following best management practice, but they are comprehensive. And this is about administrative workload. Administrative workload nowadays to create a voyage plan is pretty huge. We think there is time to support the navigator to reduce that administrative workload by using algorithm, by using features, which makes the administrative life easier for the navigator, inviting then the navigator to check to invest the time he saved into the safety checks again, to look after the validation of data on in the ACTIS as such, on the ENC as such. Validation of data is one of the, of the OCAMF voyage stages, which they have now newly, or not newly, but introduced in their latest publication about the use of an ACTIS. As you certainly will know, the IMO guidelines are referring to passage planning stages as follows. They're saying appraisal, planning, executing, and monitoring. The OCAMF gives one stage on top, or let's say it adds one stage. It says we have appraisal, planning, then we have validation of data, and then the two last stages of the IMO is combined for the OCAMF which is executing monitoring. This validation of data is important. Check the route, check if the route is safe. Do not use only the route check function in the ACTIS, but also go with the good old way, when we had the paper chart, good old in, in quotation, with the finger along the uh, course and check if you found any dangers. Right, this was uh, in short uh, the idea and the philosophy behind Myra and I'm happy now to hand over to Florian which will guide us through the product, the solution itself and will uh, provide some technical details and backgrounds how the system is working. Florian, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you for the intro. Um, I will share my screen now. Good. Yeah. Um, thank you very much, Frank, again. Um, from my side, a uh, warm welcome to all the participants today. Um, as mentioned by Frank, I'm the product manager of Myra. And today I will take you through a tour through Myra, um, concentrating on a couple of main topics. Um, the first one is uh, I will talk a little bit of uh, some supplementary tools which are inside of Myra. Um, I will explain the Voyage Plan dashboard. Um, concentrating on the Voyage Plan creation process with a focus on old features, but as well on new features. So it's not only a presentation of new features, it describes a whole workflow and therefore, of course, uh, uh, mentioning the old uh, functionalities as well. And uh, to the end of the presentation, we will have a look into the route. We will have a quick look into the voyage plan and what we can expect from the system and why or what is our way to um, uh, reduce the um, the workload or the administrative workload and um, allowing the planning officer to concentrate on validation and risk assessment. So that's the plan for today. Let me start with uh, one of the new um, supplementary fi uh, functionality we have implemented into Myra um, to um, really reduce the workflow. We um, have the root converter inbuilt. So uh, in the old Myra versions, we um, delivered an extra tool which allows to um, convert the root to the desired actus format. Um, so because our system always transmits this, the root in a standardized RTZ format and not every actus is capable to 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 load these files directly and um, to ease the process on board we decided to integrate the root converter 
into Myra. So when exporting a route, um, the route is always exported in a desired access format. Um, and when importing the route, uh, it can be imported by the um, respective format from the actors and it will automatically convert it in an RTZ so that our backend is able to um, read the file and work with the file. So that's uh, a, a, a very good step forward to um, reduce um, the, the steps for a navigator. It's reduce the uh, um, possibilities of errors, of um, not following the process correctly. and um, uh, I think that's a very good benefit for Myra. The second uh, supplementary tool or auxiliary tool is the root network. Um, basically, the end user will not see too many differences compared to the previous versions, but the, um, the remarkable things which were achieved is that the size of the root network has been reduced by 95%. So, um, and um, this allows us to update the root network remotely. So we're not depending on any uh, shipping anymore by DVDs or providing it on the um, on, a, on, a, on a delivery server, file delivery server. Um, so the, the, the vessel may just be capable to download it when staying in port. So there were always delay from uh, publishing the root network until having it available on board. We um, uh, improved here. So we reduced the size of the root network down to five megabytes. Uh, it allows us to do remote updates. And the biggest advantage for the users at this point is that it have always access to the latest ports and terminals. They've always access to the latest via points and they've always access to the latest pilot stations in the system. So that gives a very big advantage to the version before. Um, this uh, related to the um, supplementary tools. Now I was start with the voyage planning process. To start off, uh, you can see my dashboard. Um, we have uh, one active voyage plan. Uh, currently, uh, we are going from Galveston to Carteret, uh, close to New York. Um, this is an active voyage. And now uh, we want to have a voyage plan already prepared for the next voyage um, to do this uh, in advance and not uh, requiring to do it uh, while port stay, where the where the nautica uh, the nautical officer has a lot of things to do with cargo watch and, and so on and so forth. So um, it's allows to plan upfront. <clears throat> it's allowed to have up to um, five or six um, um, pending voyage plans. So in total active voyage plans and pending voyage plans are allowed to be six. We have one active, which allows us to create potentially five additional voyage plans for the pipe. Um, we allow to um, have a couple of small functionalities here to, um, to work with this dashboard. One is uh, for the active voyage plan. Um, or for each pending letter on, we have a button to show some voyage details. If, if the user will have um, short reference to the route, what was set, what were the safety settings, and so on and so forth. Um, it can be retrieved from the show initial voyage data. And um, we have a function to, uh, to reuse a, a voyage plan, which is currently not possible. You see it's grayed out because one is already in creation. We can always create one at a time, which makes sense to not mix up things. We try to have the workflow as easy as possible. So to reduce the amount of, of potential errors. So um, we will start now with the voyage plan creation. I will open this creation. And uh, we start with a first mask. You can see that 
we have a pretty straightforward workflow the navigator or the planning officer needs to follow um, here again the intention is to make it as straightforward as possible to reduce the potential errors um, let's name our voyage plan um, webinar one and we give it an id pep01 so um, we have the possibility to select between a port and a sea position um, so of course not every voyage may start at a port uh, the vessel might uh, is underway from port to port um, for for orders or going to baltic sea for orders for tankers for example um, so we can select a sea position as departure or select a sea position for arrival depending on the use case um, so when we just select sea position uh, the port and terminal cannot be selected it can be entered a manual position today we want to um, um, concentrate on port to port uh, routing we i have mentioned before that currently the vessel is going from galveston to carteret in new york so next voyage will be from carteret well, let's we can we can search for uh, port names or for countries for example when we enter the country germany then all ports uh, available or we have in our database for germany are listed we can look for um, um, for the port itself for example new york then we have different ports in new york available or the to be more specific uh, we can search for the un low code then it's uh, pretty straightforward because it's similar to uh, airports for example it's very well known that several airports in a city have different low codes same applies for ports uh, one city may have ports with different location codes so to be more specific the un low code can be used here um, we have a pre-selected terminal um, because in this um, uh, port we just have one terminal available uh, so we don't have a selection um, nevertheless it might be the case that a port has different berths different terminals and of course uh, there will new terminals in place um, and they might not be in the database yet so we allow to customize the position uh, so maybe the navigational officer planning officer received um, um, a, a note to of the exact place to go uh, then this can be entered here um, and we we can see that uh, the desired or specified position is located roughly three cables away from the initial selected terminal um, this indicator is a small indicator to um, avoid like number flipping so that uh, for example um, we put in, instead of uh, 35 is that's 53 then it's marked red and says oh it's 18 miles away are you sure are you are you sure that you want to select this or is a, is a value just uh, incorrect so um, it's an indicator um, for the user to make sure that it's not um, select a uh, birthing position too far away so today we go from Carteret to uh, Wilhelmshaven and we go to the Hest tanker terminal here you can see we have different terminals available we take the has tanker terminal once everything is set this button changed from um, red to blue so everything is entered everything is validated and okay and we can jump to the next step on the top of the page 
we can see a couple of informations um, like it's a vessel type product tanker uh, with a beam of 28 meters length of 171 meters so it's a handy sized tanker um, we are not able to change it here in the interface basically this is information which will not change voyage per voyage it's standardized informations for this specific vessel um, nevertheless those informations are taken into consideration at a later stage when uh, finding the proper route for the voyage um, so especially um, the, gen the vessel length the beam the vessel type and the gross tonnage so those information are retrieved for route calculation additionally um, we need to define some safety settings we increased compared to myra 1.6 we increased uh, the options for cargo um, our routing system increased the options for route finding so it means we have more options uh, automatically considered and to make this available for the um, for the users we had to extend the cargo information as well uh, today uh, we going in loaded condition or partly loaded condition but we have liquid bikes on board um, we have dangerous goods we uh, have for example i don't know we have nafta on board or we have uh, black cargo on board um, so dangerous goods um, so when we're talking about uh, oils um, the marpol annex one needs to be selected but we additionally offer uh, marple annex 2 as well with the different categories x y z um, or other substances um, so all those settings will be considered in the root finding process at a later stage so as i said we are product tanker we have oils on board um, clean or black cargo doesn't matter here um, it's marple annex one um, we have to define the safety settings um, that not nothing has changed compared to Mara 1.6 but it's a very sensitive uh, topic that's why I would like to um, dig into it a little bit to uh, to mention some specific things here um, the vessel today has just 8.7 meters draft it has a height of 32 meters um, and um, we have to define the minimum required UKC and safety margin. Um, we have a small information button here with a question mark um, to give some insights. So for our interpretation, what does it mean? So maximum, Myra maximum draft, we mean here in our system that we pay in initially defined as a, a maximum static draft and then we have all the other values um, uh, draft increase um, for dynamic factors we have uh, safety margins and required under keel clearances so this is supposed to be entered in the um, in the voice segment um, um, my required you can see in safety margin section and both together will define the Myra minimum actus safety contour. So the basis for the root check. Um, we are aware that this is a, a standard case. We are aware that company safety management systems may have slightly different definitions. Uh, one of our very good specific um, um, services is that we provide a quick user guide um, it's a special service from chart world where um, exactly this slight difference differences are named and addressed and uh, giving a clear guidance for each individual company how to define those settings um, in my case we uh, defining the birthing area with the robot, three meters we will define roughly with 10% the confined waters, um, the coastal waters was roughly 20%, and we define um, the open sea with 4.5 meters safety margin and required UKC. Um, 
we can see now that uh, the minimum safety contour is defined for different segments. Um, so we are allowing to um, define those uh, margins for uh, berthing confined waters, coastal waters and open sea. So means every segment of a route has different uh, requirements on the safety settings, of course. Um, um, squad might be different in open sea from confined waters but impact of waves so draft increasement by healing or pitching might be much less in confined waters compared to coastal waters so um, that's why we offer different uh, settings here which absolutely makes sense to have a most reliable route calculation and route check in the end um, we need to give a margin for the overhead clearance define it with three meters. So again, running through the post process, um, everything is defined, everything is defined uh, and validated. The button changes to blue, so everything looks good. The next section is about service and routing. Um, so what does it mean? We have some services integrated in Myra. Um, um we are allowing to um create one-time voyage plan so voyage plan is created once at the beginning of the voyage and it's valid for the complete voyage um this can be defined by uh, or can be supported by weather routing so it can be switched on it can be switched off um, or it can be uh, the shortest safe route would we provide when weather routing is selected one of our um, solution partners um, will optimize certain parts of the voyage uh, the second service we offer is an end voyage ser service the end voyage service is only allow or only possible uh, in combination with weather routing um, what is the end voyage service the end voyage service uh, updates the route and the voyage plan every 24 hours automatically so this makes sure that the route geometry is adjusted based on changing weather situations and um, this um, would make sense on, on longer travels or when uh, weather route optimization really has um, significant impacts on transatlantic voyages for example um, today we stay on one-time voyage voyages without optimization. Um, one of the new features of Myra 1.8 is to avoid a function to avoid special areas. Um, we trying to or we providing several functionalities to fine tune the request, to customize the request, to not dictating the, the, the planning officer exactly where to sail because there are some operational requirements there are vessel dimension which requires different uh, kind of uh, route geometries so this try, we try to 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 address with such a functionalities here we can allow uh, we can avoid internal waters territorial waters or mission control areas always given the fact that the port is not located in that area. So for example, when the port is located in the mission control area, we, um, we of course cannot completely keep clear of it because we need to enter the port, but we try then to find the shortest way inside. Um, here again, we have added some examples um, explaining two, two main use cases. Um, which gives a little bit insights in how this functionality works. So um, the green one is the function allow. This is the first option, which doesn't consider anything of that areas. Uh, we can see here the territorial water line, 12 nautical miles. Um, minimize uh, would try to uh, find a way out, but uh, balancing between shortest route and staying outside and keep clear finds the shortest way out stays maximum time outside of the desired area and finding the shortest way in to the port again um so um this 
could be an option for short voyages where uh, certain operations needs to be done. So for example, less than 24 hours and feeder travel that where operations need to be done, or sometimes we want to stay outside of a certain areas to um, have clear distances to, um, to certain areas. Um, so this is uh, the one use case. Another use case is uh, on medium or long voyages that generally the vessel stays outside 12 um, on the one or other end. So it's very unlikely that on a 24 or three or four days voyage, the vessel stays completely inside of a certain areas. But still, when using just allow, it might be that the time outside of 12 nautical miles uh, is not sufficient. So minimize here finds a good balance between uh, the way out the respective area and the time outside of the respective area. But um, obviously, um, to keep completely clear, in this case with the territory waters, might not be very optimal finding the shortest way out and staying as long as possible outside might be a undesired uh, length increasement to the route. But um, I would like to highlight that keep clear and avoid separation might make sense. Um, keep clear or will make sense. Um, keep clear it, it has a very popular use case, I would say, when um, going to, for example, from Europe to the Caribbean, um, and you would like to keep clear from Puerto Rico. So selecting keep clear makes really sure that the route is not entering the ACA area um, of uh, Puerto Rico, or when you transit um, um, to, to, to further north, uh, via uh, Mona Passage or something, or even more north, uh, Bahamas, um, that um, uh, that it stays clear from, from the respective acre in the United States. So um, avoid um, can be uh, another use case, which is uh, very interesting, is to um, just make sure to stay certain distance to the shoreline. So of course, sometimes um, a small vessel may wish to sail quite close to the shoreline, but a big vessel wants to stay more outside. So um, the 12 nautical miles on territorial waters can be used to ensure the route stays certain distance. So these are additional use cases for those areas. So today we want to, we go from New York to Wemshaven and we want to uh, minimize our time in the acre. So we are in an acre when we're starting and we arrive in an acre, but we want to minimize that time um, to save some money. Um, we give some uh, um, offsets. Uh, we allow to define some offsets um, between zero and four nautical miles. Uh, again, um, not every vessel has the same um, uh, maneuverability or the same um, safety margins. So, uh, and um, of course, um, we have a small support here, which gives a guidance. So when it's a small vessel and in ballast condition, select one to two, this is a higher, val uh, higher value when it's a bigger vessel or vessels in loaded conditions. Um, it's just a guidance. I select as well two nautical miles, even I am uh, uh, I am um, loaded, but the reason why I decide two nautical miles is the acre is located on my port side and I want to have, uh, I, I don't see the requirement to stay too far away from the area. Um, so I define it with two nautical miles as my starboard side is clear at any times. So once this is defined, uh, we can go to the root section. The root section describes um, the, um, yeah, uh, or provides a first view on the potential root. Um, this first view is just, um, um, it's just an um, indicator. Um, as mentioned, we go from New York to Wilhelmshaven. Um, it's just an indicator, it's not uh, really the final route. Uh, it's just to work with the route. Um, 
we allow to fine tune the root geometry again at this stage. We working with um, um, via points. So this green dots, red dots, green means open, red means closed um, to fine tune the, um, um, the geometry here, Pentland first. We may decide, no, we don't want to use that. We want to close it for our passage, but you can see that so now it's selected. We need to recalculate the voyage. It goes here. But on this voyage, I intend to go via the English Channel. So I could even either close all the wire areas to try to um, close all the respective ones until the route is calculated through the English Channel. Um, this was the case in Marwa 1.6, uh, which was a little bit inconvenient here and there. Therefore, for such cases, um, we have a new function to define must-go points. So must-go points, as the name says, um, defines points where the route needs to pass through. For example, here, Dover, straight eastbound. We define it as a must-go point. And when we then calculate the route, then the route is passing through the Dover Strait. Um, good. Yeah, it's um, passing through the Dover Strait. It's possible to define um, up to three Basco points in sequential order. So um, they need to be uh, passing first one, then two, then three, uh, in the order the vessel should pass them. So it's if you if, if the they are mixed up, then uh, there might be um, back and forth routes. Um, but up to three in sequential orders can be defined. Um, additionally, we will define a departure time. Uh, tomorrow at noon time, we will depart. We have to define two speeds, one for the river speed and one for the sea speed. Um, so river speed is used for all waters um, after departure until leaving the um, baseline, so leaving the internal waters. So and from baseline on the route, will calculate it with C speed. Good. So once this, def this is defined, so we define a Musco point, we close some via points, we define the speed, we can move ahead again with the next button. Um, we allow to define pilot stations. Um, the main purpose of pilot stations is one, to provide additional information. And the second is uh, when route optimization is selected, um, then the route optimization, the weather routing, will start from that pilot station. The reason is we say we are perfect in, uh, we're very good in providing the safe routes, especially at, at, and, and that area which is inside of confined waters. Um, and from this point uh, where weather routing has a lot of effect, uh, we hand over the route. The optimized routes are calculated on the same um, database as we are using it, but it's not created by ourselves, it's created by our solution partners. So, but from this point, we, um, we cut the route and from here until the arrival pilot station, we send the route out for optimization. Again, arrival pilot will be selected. If the pilot, or in case the pilot station um, has um, some additional metadata attached, um, such as a communication channel or how the vessel is boarding, attended to board, um, this is added to this information box. Sometimes we have information about um, pilot stations for deep draft vessels or different things. Um, so this is addressed here to give some additional insights. Once this is done, basically um, the process is done. The process of voyage plan creation is done. We have a summary here. Um, again, it can be validated in case um, anything is set incorrectly 
the button here follow to the process which is everywhere is not indicated blue it will be indicated red so something is not correct uh, pressing on change will move to the respective section and allow it to change it a voyage plan request cannot be sent when any of the buttons is red so once it's done we're sending the request out it's sent it to our back end and then it's it's calculated and we receive a route. So again, um, the voyage planning process is done. I have given some insights about the requirement to define settings carefully, the impact of the settings, uh, the potential impact of the settings. Now I would like to run through the route which is calculated automatically to visualize how those things are um, taken in consideration just to um, to um, yeah to visualize it to highlight it so let's starting at the birth um, so um, the initial birth i have defined was here this one and then i entered a manual position because we have information received from the agent from the charterer from the um, from the port that our birth is here um, so i have changed it manually and the birthing position is here the system is able to connect basically every point um, to the existing root network um, so uh, we have an algorithm which finds those points and finds the route to our root network um, this is a first uh, relevant thing. Um, another thing is speed restrictions. Um, we detecting speed restrictions along the route. Here uh, we have a right whale area in, uh, in, in New York. We have a speed restriction in and the speed restriction out. Um, so it means at this uh, area, the speed needs to be reduced to 10 knots uh, even it's already defined or it's planned with 13.5 the system will reduce it because it's simply not allowed to run faster than 10 knots in certain time frames um, so and outside of the uh, whale season the system will not detect the speed area because it doesn't have a relevance um, we can see that the route calculated will stay outside of uh, the ECA zone so it's leaving ECA zone here it's um, not perfectly shown but this is the territory waters uh, and the the ECA zone um, so our extension of the territory waters and the ECA zone so and we can see that the route stays outside of this area um, next thing to highlight is um, this one um, here in the exit western exit uh, eastern exit of uh, of the english channel um, the route is taking the southern lane here here is another option but the system will detect automatically that this is only to be used by deep draft vessels so we definitely not a deep draft vessel so the algorithm automatically um, considerates uh, this southern lane so gives an insights how it's important to um, define the vessel dimensions and the, the draft uh, carefully uh, because there's direct relevance as not only to the route check but as well to find the best route um, the selected cargo uh, has some influence as well um, so um, this, uh, this route is taken, so staying outside uh, or not using the TSS tear shelling because um, vessels um, with, uh, with um, um, oils on board should take this one, exceeding a certain gross tonnage amount, but um, yeah, needs, needs to take the outer. That's decided by the system automatically as well. And in the final end, um, the route arrives in Wilhelmshaven real birth to birth route so it's until the final point so 
basically on arrival. So no further modifications for birth to birth planning are required here. Root is on spot on the birth. Um, this is one major result of our system, providing a route, including corridors, um, and um, considering several um, different things along the route. And as additional file, we deliver a voyage plan in Excel format. Um, it's a summary of the voyage containing route data, but containing other data from the voyage plan creation. It contains data from, from the company information from our back end. So it's a summary of all relevant information. Um, it allows to add some notes and remarks. So for example, um, the master may need, wish to add some additional information um, to give instructions to, to his officers. Uh, time zones can be defined. Um, we have uh, the possibility to add um, um, pilots, pilot information, pilot boarding information, available tux, uh, and so on and so forth. That provides some, some um, space for notes and inputs. Um, most powerful tool is the risk assessment uh, page. Um, here we can see the route check uh, results. Um, in this route, everything um, is according to um, or is safe according to the um, Actus performance standard. So um, the route check is successful. It might be the case that uh, a, a, a route check uh, indicates uh, a lack to be assessed. Nothing critical. Everybody knows um, chart data. Um, um, has is, some areas is not sufficient enough for uh, exact route check. So it's it's when it's indicated as unsafe, it means have a look, assess the situation, and uh, it might be still safe due to different circumstances. Because we found a spot sounding, uh, we identified uh, that um, we we received information from the local authorities, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but nevertheless, here another check we're doing is um, is the route uh, compliant with the company's UKC policy? So even if a leg is safe, uh, it might be the case that uh, the UKC is not uh, sufficient um, in uh, accordance to the um, uh, UKC policy. Um, the UKC policy, we have a predefined one added here. Uh, for birthing, confined waters, coastal and open sea. We allowing customers to, to define their own one. Um, then the own one is, uh, is, um, is considered. But the effect is um, here we have a depth area from 10 to 20 meters, which is safe for the vessel generally, safety contour value is nine meters, so it's below, it's safe. At this check, we don't uh, consider cut sock. Um, there's a valid reason for it, don't need to explain here. It will um, uh, be over the, the um, content of this um, uh, webinar. But um, the UKC requirements um, will be based on the vessel draft and we want to have a certain um, um, certain depth under it. It's not given based on the 10 meters, but what we allow is to enter a minimum spotted sounding. So we allow to do risk assessment. We can go in that section here. Oh, I need to switch on more detailed. So, and we can see that we have a 19.5 meter spot sounding here. So uh, there is uh, an indicator that the water is sufficient. We can go back to the voyage plan and say, okay, it's 19.5. We did a risk assessment. It's one part of the risk assessment that others can be taken, but it can be entered. Okay, we, we are sure that there's a relevant depths available. Um, and you can see it switched to OK, and then we can say, yes, risk assessment is done.
So this allows to work with a voyage plan to support the users by risk assessment. Once uh, it's finalized, Mara 1.8 allows to upload this voyage plan in Myra, so it can be stored, uh, the completed version, it can be printed and signed, whatever, uh, what, what's uh, preference of the company. Then it can load it into Myra and it will be visualized in our My Fleet, our fleet monitoring solution. So that helps to synchronize the knowledge space between ship and shore side. Um, another thing worth to mention is we deliver based on the routes, not only the charts, as mentioned before, not only um, the ADP or the sailing directions, we additionally deliver the relevant PNP notice and NAF area warnings um, uh, together with the route. So uh, not the whole world, we're just focusing on the, on the uh, notices, re notices required for this specific voyage. So they are added here um, with some information, but on top we deliver them in a HTML format, in a, a summary where it's detailed, explained exactly the things um, usually received on board. Um, and the same, we received enough area warnings here relevance for, um, for um, UK coastal and we receive of course others as well. Um, specific for all enough areas passed by on the voyage. So um, with additional information. So this is provided as well um, to allow sufficient risk assessment along the route. Yeah, basically that's uh, my part of this webinar. And I would like to just um, sum up that um, we run through the supplementary tools. We had a short look into the dashboard. We had um, extended view on the voyage plan creation um, and uh, reviewed the results, how they connected to each other um how to um uh, how we intend to change the workload from administrative workload to sufficient uh, validation the data and doing proper risk assessment and um we are convinced that myra is a very comprehensive solution supporting um the vessels using Myra. Uh, it absolutely simplifies a very complex process um, for the voyage plan creation. Um, it reduces administrative workflow, which can be, uh, which was mentioned already a couple of times, but it's worth to mention it over and over again because it's really, um, I, I was navigator as well and I remember how, how workload increased over time in this regards and um, how Myra reduces this administrative workflow. And finally, and uh, one of the main target, of course, we try or we are significantly enhance safety and compliance. And it's the ultimate, ultimate goal to make shipping more safe and more compliance by ease the workflow for the respective stakeholders. Yeah, that's from my side. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Florian, for this very, very comprehensive and technically in-depth, really valuable presentation about how Myra is working and what it takes all into consideration. We're coming here now to the part number three of the webinar, which is the, uh, the question and answer session. And indeed, we received some, not too much, which is good because we are having only six minutes left and we don't want to run over time. The first question I received from the attendees, um, well, it was actually the last question I received um, from, from the attendees, which was referring to TNP notices, enough area warnings. You were saying, those notices are being part of the voyage plan, of Myra's voyage plan. The question is, how often are, be, are they are being updated? Yeah, um, our database is updated on a daily basis. And uh, when 
using the Envoyage service, uh, of course, which each voyage plan, uh, new, the new TNP notices are sent out based on the geometries. Uh, for one-time voyage plans, uh, it's sent out at the beginning. Potentially, there's a possibility to upload a modified route to retrieve new uh, TNP notices for that respective route. Um, because we don't have any limitations for the modified route. It's intent to fine tune the route in the beginning, but potentially it can be uploaded at any time and it will uh, allow to retrieve additional data. Well, thank you much for that. Then we're coming to the next question. One of the attendees is asking, how big is the data package we send on board ship when we're using the Myra system? So as we deliver information based on the route and uh, we are able to uh, send a low amount of data or have a, yeah, um, um, yeah, a low, a low amount of data. It's depending a little bit on the circumstances. So when the base media on board is very old, then the updates we need to send are much more than based on the new base media. Um, and of course, the length of the route depend, uh, has some influence here. But generally, we can talk about um, five megabytes of data, um, maybe even less. So it's not, not, not a very um, significant amount of data we need to sh transfer back and forth. Right. Thanks for that. You were referring in course of your presentation and the route creation more than once about that the root network um, is helping to create a voyage further to which cargo is on board ship, which uh, speed limitations would apply throughout the voyage, this kind of stuff. I have one question which is saying, is this root network, is this also available or is it only available as a voyage planning tool in Myra or potentially also could it be used in a fleet operation center? Um... Yes, um, the root network or the routing engine is accessible from outside via an API. So we um, allow um, external programs and um, um, back offices to connect to these um, uh, routing engine and we can deliver routes outside of Myra as well. Right. Um, another question is referring to, but I think you, you, you were talking about this already. Um, Myra in conjunction with a non-chart world actus. Which limitation do we have? I saw we have the, now the root converter uh, in-house, so to say, from the Myra software. Could you just give a brief overview which non-chart non, non world actuses we can use when we, are, when we intend to use Myra? Yeah, basically, um, we in total supporting 15 different formats. Um, we supporting the main um, Actus models from uh, old ones from from Narcos 5, for example, or uh, so from some, some electronics or new some electronics some um, some electronics Narcos Platinum. We support uh, Furuno systems. Um, Worth to mention here that we not only convert between um, uh, between this world or between that and the target format for Furuno, as well then the root length uh, is more than 200 waypoints, which may cause se severe issues on the on the Furuno actors or some of the actor systems. Then we splitting the the route in different parts um, to avoid any um, malfunctions on, on, on that systems. Um, so we trying to, um, let's say, support as many systems as possible and, and the most convenient way for the user. Right, thanks for that. Um, when you explained for the Voyage Plan template provided by Myra, you were saying that the UKC can be changed according to customer needs. One of the question is, can the voyage plan template further being adjusted, customized? Is there an option for that? Yes. Um, so the voyage plan I have shown is a standard template. Uh, the standard we um, defined uh, internally, but of course in, in um, 
uh, in, in combination or in collaboration with uh, our customers. But um, we see the need that uh, voyage plans um, as well may need some fine tuning for different companies and we allow to do that fine tuning so um, the UKC policy can be adjusted, um, Katsok policy could be adjusted, some entry fields can be removed or position can be changed. Um, so there are a lot of uh, customized um, function or possibilities um, to make this voyage plan really usable for our customers. Right. Last question we have would be about the communication connections, which is required for Myra. Could you give some insights here, please? Yeah, basically, Myra um, has two communication ways. Um, one is HTTP, uh, with, where Myra directly connects to to the back end uh, shore side and our and our um, yeah our company. So um, this is HTTP uh, by a direct connection and the other one is via mail. Um, so when using mail, it's the traditional way uh, emails are sent to a mailbox and Myra just retrieves these mails from the, the um, respective uh, mailbox. Um, so for let's say inconstant internet connections mail might be desired but for stability and functionality https is a most convenient way to com communicate between myra and our back office or back end okie dokie again very very thanks to florian for this great presentation and for all the technical uh, insights we have received today uh, much appreciate that. If you, dear, dear attendees, would have any further questions and queries, you see my email address now in the last slide, which is frank.proger at chartworld.com. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions, or queries, whatever it could be. Please also address any further suggestion for improvement for, to the product to me. I would be happy to take it up together with my team. Again, all of you, many thanks for attending this seminar. I hope um, you found it interesting and I hope to see you in our next webinar then again. Have a very good one. Wishing you a pleasant stay ahead. Thank you much, Florian. See you later. Thank you very much, Frank. Everybody, a good, good day and um, yeah, thank you for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the day. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you.